Welcome back to Barely Research Facts. And it's finally time for the great recap episode. We've done so much this year that we've been so proud of. We've celebrated days special to us and the world. We've had guests on. We've discussed everything under the sun and the moon. From the fascinating to the bizarre, from cults to dictatorships, from the gruesome, Krampus, to the ludicrous, Mooney's cults. We've done our best to keep things interesting and which wasn't very hard to do considering the world and indeed humanity's ability to be downright weird. Here's a short reminder of what we got up to. This year we've celebrated. Getting you right into the holiday spirit, this episode we've chosen the word holidays. And I jump right into that holiday spirit with the legend of Krampus. So the reason why we've chosen prank for this week's episode is is because July 27th is the anniversary of one of the most famous pranks in the world. July 27th is the day that Rick Astley's iconic song, Never Gonna Give You Up, was released in 1987. And therefore, now we have an episode based entirely on pranks. So that's where, that's where this brings you. <laughs> I mean, I, I think he's probably just accepted it and uh, <laughs> taken it on really, you know, really good way. How his song is just basically only for pranks. Our word this episode is an Independence Day special. We're going with revolution. So a quick summary about what to expect this episode. So three days ago, it was the 23rd of November. Great maths there. (laughs) (laughs) It was um, Fibonacci Day. We've had an expert on. We've collaborated with Payal Shah, who runs the amazing Kobo Fermentary, which is basically your one-stop dream destination for any fermenting questions. Payal is this fountain of fermenting knowledge, and every conversation with her has just been fascinating for both Shah and me. We've told stories, our tribute to the wonderful world of audio drama through some truly bone-chilling stories. Our first story is called Homecoming, written by Shah and performed by Yuki Elias. If you missed the first story we released, check out yesterday's episode. Today's story is an inedible treat. I mean, it's indelible. Hunger is written by Shar once again and is being performed by Vidyut Garvi. We've discussed cults. In this episode, <laughs> we discuss the scientific implications of plonking a werewolf on the moon before we spend some time deciding what exactly qualifies an organization as a cult that ruins lives, breaks up families and causes havoc in people's lives. So in this episode, somehow we're back on the topic of cults, favorite topic for most people around. Um, wait to have, find out how we've managed this. All I'll say is that the connection with cults, it has something to do with a right triangle, some real, some misattributed discoveries. If you're guessing Tesla, you're guessing wrong. And vegetarians who weren't really vegetarians, which is a tale as old as time. Dictatorships. This isn't far from really what happens in Iraq and it seems like the Iraqis take April Fools quite seriously and they really do take dark humor to a whole new level. So, oh. yeah, and one of the reasons for this might be that the most famous proponent of this holiday in Iraq is as I mentioned the family of the Husains, Guru Amin oh. and Saddam and his son Uday. We also talk about that time North Korea landed the first man on the sun in a mere 21 hour long round trip. The fascinating So Hank is a pistol shrimp actual name and very aptly named as well each time his claws snap bubbles shoot forward and for a brief moment produce nearly as much heat as the sun's surface If there's anything that we or indeed everyone in the world needs right now it's a chill pill and we'll give you a precise recipe for one uh, straight from the most medically sound and reliable century in human history the 1800s the bizarre in this episode <laughs> we discuss the scientific implications of plonking a werewolf on the moon communicating telepathically and telegraphically with big eared martians no small feet and why in the world the unstoppable telegram had stops in it and the heartwarming The last telegram in India was sent on the 14th of July 2013, which is why our word for this episode is telegram. With that little trip down BRF Memories Lane, we hope you've come along with us on this journey. When we started recording season 2, we knew we had to continue doing what we enjoy doing the most during season 1. 
learning something new, while making each other laugh in the process. What we didn't realize is that we would have other people interested in this very same thing along with us. And we're thankful. We're really thankful for the feature in Paul Kondo's currently on hiatus newsletter, Podcast Gumbo, and for our article featuring community podcast recommendations from listeners around India in Eric Jones's newsletter, Hurt Your Brain, to Manikpod, a podcast production house in Mumbai, for having Ragini on as a guest to chat about all the nooks and crannies that podcasting spreads into. And we're especially thankful to every podcaster who took the time to write to us or write back to us with valuable input and sometimes just a word of encouragement and praise. Right. So on to something just as exciting. We're not sure if you know, but BRF is a product from Art Now Thus, a media startup based in Mumbai. We wanted to take this opportunity to put a call out. For whom you ask? Well, for any of you who is interested in making that first step with your own podcast. Art Now Thus proudly and successfully produces barely research facts and it has its arms wide open for fresh new ideas that can turn into the great new next podcast. We'll help you nurture your idea into something real, something published, and something fabulous. If you think you fit this bill, get in touch with us at hi at artnowthus.in and we'll take it from there. And now, a great, big, very special thank you to the people who listen to us. Without you listening, without your feedback, good and bad, and advice, good and bad, we really wouldn't enjoy doing this as much as we have. You guys have heard so much about us. Our likes, our dislikes, our quirks, the things that make us laugh, some warranted and some that are just straight up weird, and the things that give us the ache. Well, we had a dig around and had quite a lot of fun doing it, and we learned a thing or two about you. So, we learned that over 45% of our listeners are in India. Shock. Not a surprise, really. <laughs> But what is surprising is that 30% of you are in the US. All those foreign relatives of ours representing. We also learned that 4% of you are in New Zealand. Oi, oi, Kiwis. And 56% of you are female or identify as female anyway, which we can't help but be extra proud of. Women are known to have superior taste. Now, before it gets weirdly sexist, let's get ageist. For the 28 to 34 year olds who are spending all their time listening to us rather than adulting hard, because why adult when you can procrastinate? Thank you. Just, just thank you. We've learned that you're a diverse bunch and you gave our little podcast a chance. So thanks. Finally, we also learned that you guys have gone just goo goo gaga over the episode revolution, which says a lot. We will see you on the other side of this seasonal revolution. We've been Ragini and Shar, and you have been just awesome. See you guys. See you guys. As always, this episode was edited by Mohit Chandelier. Music for the episode is by Charita Arora. Bye.